Welcome, I'm the Deadwood Jedi, this is another Raid Shadow Legends video. Uh, I was chilling tonight. Uh, this was my Monday, I was like, hey, we're taking the day off, had my D&D &D game, everything was great, had a glass of wine, or two, or maybe three, so maybe this will be a little bit more rambly of a video, but I was uh, playing around, you know, getting ready for the Clan v Clan, trying to get my uh, fragments and my champions for the Karato Fusion, all that jazz, and I noticed there's a, there's a new champion up in the uh, portal there. Uh, you know, right, right up there. There's a new champion. Uh, I was like, "Well, what's with her doing there? With her, the crown? What's going on? Oh, we got a guaranteed champion summons event. I don't know if they made an announcement. I'd made just not paying attention to it. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes these things sneak up on me. But yeah, we got a guaranteed summons event here for with her, the crown. And so I don't know what to do. Fifteen sacred shards to pull this champion. Is she that good? Is 15 a good number? You know, we have another summoning event this weekend. It's a 2x sacred this weekend. And it, I think it's a champion chase uh, this weekend as well, right? So, you know, I kind of pulled all my fragment summons, so I don't got a lot of those sitting in the bank. I'm going to have to decide. Do I want to pull my sacreds for this champion, or do I want to do it this weekend? Now, like, obviously, I have 11 shards there, but if I want to get 15, I'll get 15. That's not an issue for me. But for you guys, that's definitely something to think about, right? You can only have, if you, if you pull 14, it's not going to get you with here. So there's no point if you have less than 15. But if you have 15, some, you know, you got to figure out, hey, is this is something I want to do or maybe not. And then you got to figure out, you know, the Karate Fusion is still going on. You're going to need that rare champion that's coming this weekend. Unless you got the epic from the previous event, you're going to need to get that rare, right? There's no, like, extra champions in this one. So you're going to have to make sure you have enough shards to pull for that. And who knows if you're going to have bonus sacreds by the weekend. That's going to be tough. So you're going to have to kind of plan this one out, guys. You're going to have to think about this one pretty intensely and figure out exactly, is this what I'm going to want to do? And I'll be honest, I don't know. I love this champion. I think she's really good. Uh, I think there's a lot to like about it. But, I mean, if we look at the Karato Fusion, right, we've got, what is it? We just finished the Summon Rush. So we got a champion chase tournament this weekend. And you're going to need that champion chase to get the, that last cage bound. Now, if you have champions in the uh, fragment, right? In the fragment pool. If you haven't, like, pulled all your fragment summons. Like, I got two. I got Thalesius chilling there. I got Scion chilling here. You know, I can pull them for that and get myself some extra points. Uh, is it going to be enough? Mm, I don't think so. Two epics. I mean, the summon rush, they the points they needed for, to get even uh, cage bound were huge, like ridiculous high. So I have to say, think that the chance of, you know, having that be anything less than like 2000 points is pretty slim. That's going to be a lot of champions you're going to need to pull, right? That's like, it's usually, that's usually you get what, like 500 points for a legendary and 250 for an epic or something like that. So it's going to be a lot, right? I don't know. I don't know. Without having my sacreds chilling there, it's going to be dicey. So I don't know what to tell you guys. Like, a part of me says, hey, this is a great opportunity. Withier's a great champion. Like, let's look at Withier. She's really good. I mean, I would rather have Withier than Corrado. But Corrado's going to be really interesting, unique. He's got that cool passive ability. There are some things later on going down the line where he might be really good. But I see Withier in plat level defenses right now. With that new increased resistance buff that's out there. She could be really good, really good. But I mean, like, look at her passive. She got continuous heal on the ally with the lowest HP at the start of each of her turns. That's great. She actually extends the duration of continuous heals. Man, pair her with an Operdin, right? Uh, in, in instantly activates them, so she's healing everybody. Increased defense buff, AOE. We don't actually get a lot of that with the healers. Then we also have uh, full cleanse. Full cleanse with a massive heal, 30% of this champion's max HP. So you can build with her with 100,000 HP, and she's got an incredible base of 24. It's not that hard to do. All of a sudden, that's a 30,000 heal across the board. That's nice. You know, A1 is an AoE attack. That's pretty solid. With a leech on it, that's nice. Continuous heal as well. I mean, there's some, there's some really nice stuff in this kit. On top of that, she's got an incredible base speed at 108. She's got a base resistance of 40. That's a nice little bonus. So building her for arena, boy, like really tanky, really resistance heavy, can make your defense incredibly tough. She can be really good for that. I would imagine, actually, she's going to be amazing for Hydra. AoE Leech on the A1. 
cleanse, continuous heals, increased defense, like all the things that we want for our champions there. She's really good. Really, really good. Is she better than Corrado? I don't know, but I really do feel like this, this event comes down to that question for most people. If you're gonna, if you have 15 sacreds, you have a tough question ahead of you because that's really what they're asking. Which one do you want? Do you want Corrado or do you want with here? That's gonna be a tough call. Um, and I don't really know what to tell you guys because personally, right now, this moment, with here's a better choice, I think. She's gonna be used more often, but boy, Corrado can be really good. When we get those new champions coming down the road that like, I don't really know, I'm just speculating, but we get some crazy new champions with some crazy passive abilities that Corrado would then ignore. Boy, Corrado becomes really good. So it's a tough choice. Uh, I don't really know what to tell you guys as far as advice goes, but that's kind of not really why I'm doing this video. I mostly just wanted to say, hey, these are things you gotta think about. You gotta think about this, right? You have to weigh the pros and cons for each of your accounts. I'm gonna be on stream tomorrow. I'll, I'm gonna talk it out with the boys and, and the girls and the people watching and we'll figure out what's the best plan here. Are we better off having Withier on our team? Are we better off having Corrado? Or, you know, do we just wail out and hope we get both? That's probably what I'm gonna end up doing. But, you know, that's me. I'm in a very different position than you guys, so. You know, if you're really struggling and having to choose between the two of them, you need to figure that out. And it's, you know, but I don't want you guys pulling charge for with her going, oh, this is exciting. And then realizing, oh, my gosh, I don't know what I'm going to do for Corrado now. Understand what's coming up. And I think that'll help you make a better choice overall, one way or the other, whichever way you go. I don't know. I'm going to have some more wine. Guys, thanks for listening to me. Hopefully you make a smart choice, one that you like. I gotta love it. I gotta get handed the player in, man. They gave us a, they gave us a really nice Sophie's choice on this one, right? Damned if you do, damned if you don't. I mean, hats off to them. Hats off to them. Okay, I gotta stop talking, guys. Till next we meet. I'm the Deadwood Jedi.